We're now going to cover the design of shear according to SANS 1162 part 1, looking shear design of steel members. And the main thing, and the, well, shear is relatively straightforward. Most um, shear members you can design with a simple one line calculation as shown here. The shear resistance is a partial factor, 0.9, times by an area of shear, times by a shear stress that we allow. Now the AV, the area of shear is commonly TW times HW for plate girders and TW times H for hot rolled steel sections. So why the difference? Well, firstly, we have a look at our section and virtually all of our shear stress is carried in this middle zone. And so we use only this area from top to bottom for a um, hot rolled section but we then use the reduced area if it's a plate girder because plate girder you weld up as three members a top flange, bottom flange and a web and so you only use the, the web there because it's not continuous until flange so there you go for your, um, uh, your uh, plate girder. The shear stress, the ultimate shear stress that you design for is lower than your yield. You only use two thirds because steel as a material is not as strong in shear as it is in tension. So we use two thirds, 0.66 times yield. And then this is, we can use this equation when the HW of a TW is less than a certain criteria. And this check is trying to make sure that we don't have web buckling. We don't have something like this occurring. Because if this web got long and thin, we would then have the web actually buckling out. So if we check it, then we will find this, this complies. Well, then we can use the simplified shear design. And you will typically find that almost all the sections in the red book um, in South Africa comply with that um, uh, equation, well that's the endless limit, you typically have plate girders and the likes before shear buckling starts to become a problem. Now, what is this value, is KW, um, I mean sorry, KV, KV is the shear buckling coefficient defined as below. Now, in our course we are not going to be dealing with uh, design or de design for shear when you have stiffness. So we have no shear stiffness. So S is the spacing of stiffness. So for S equals infinity, um, well tending to infinity, then uh, you will find KV equals 5.34. Uh, this whole term then um, gets changed. So when S over HW is greater than one, this whole term disappears if, if S is tending to infinity. So you can take for the sake of this course, KV is 5.34, and then you find this actually becomes a constant value for a specific steel grade. Now, what you will find is basically that we will cover undergrad, undergrad, and this is postgrad. So we are ignoring the rest of the equations. They do exist, but those are for slender webs where buckling does occur. In terms of the design, how come we define the shear area as that middle section? Well, let's say now you took a um, I-beam. So this is a, a design example. You've got an IPE 200 profile and you apply a load of let's say 180 kilonewtons to it. If you plot the shear stresses in the section you will have a distribution that looks as shown here. Uh, and you will see that the shear stress in the flange is quite small. It gets up to a maximum of about 44 MPa where at the middle it's 173 MPa. If we plot this as a uniform stress, if we convert this stress here into a rectangular stress distribution, we end up with that. Then we have a nice rectangular stress block and that is where we set our um, 0.66 FS relative to as well. And uh, well, why we, um, well, we, we limit this rectangular area to 0.6 FFs and this is why we simplify that the area in the middle carries the shear stress. So that red area is what carries our shear stress. We limit it in there to um, 
6FS and we then can ignore the flanges. It makes our calculations a lot easier. But remember this section we are doing at the moment is for webs of flexural members with two flanges. So with two flanges we can use a simple rule and design it. But let's say what happens if it doesn't have two flanges? What happens if it's got one flange? Or we're going to do a detailed design of this I-beam we've got shown here. Well, there is uh, equations for the design. Here you check a stress. Tau, the stress, the shear stress in a beam due to applied shear force can be calculated as follows. So tau is our V, our shear um, force times by A star times by y bar and then divided by i t. Um, just going to write this out in case it's not coming through clearly for you. And this is a stress at a point. So what you would do is you would calculate the stress at each position. So we'd calculate tau there and tau there and tau there, etc. To be honest, it, we would probably just do it once in the flange, once in the web, and then once in the web and just plot a curve. But if you were a computer, you'd calculate lots of positions and then join them all up, and you would get this distribution as shown here. So when we deal with it, we use the area outside of what we are considering. For instance, if we are designing this beam and we want to know what is the shear stress at that position there, at some um, position, what is the shear stress right there? We need to know what is outside of that. So then this becomes our A star, our area outside of our allowable area, A star, times by um, the thickness, well sorry, divide by the thickness, uh, times by shear force, Y bar, Y bar is the distance to the centroid, so of the red area, that point is the centroid, of it and then um, we also need to divide by it moment of inertia of the entire section so it looks more worse than it is this we know this we know this we know this we've got to work out and that we've got to work out so the a star and y bar we've got to work out and if you take um, sort of good places to do it it comes a lot easier for instance if you take that section there um, your, your calculations become a lot simpler when you um, do it. So uh, then your Y bar and A star, etc. are very easy to work out. So that gives you a bit of an overview, firstly, of sort of a simple shear design, and then what you could consider, I suppose, a, a rational shear design or a, um, a design when you don't have a simple method with a uniform stress across its section. You get to a stress, and then you will check, is my maximum stress less than the allowable? So for instance, if I have a T-beam, or whatever section beam, I would find, what you'll always find is that the, the maximum shear stress is at the centroid. I get a shear stress distribution, and then I just check, is this tau max less than or equal my um, tau allowable, well, my tau, the, the shear stress at ultimate state, which I allow for. So uh, that will give you an overview of um, design of shear members according to SANS 1162 and then also extending out beyond that to a more sort of rational shear design method. Thank you.